The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tammy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN Thursday morning, just after 9.06 a.m. And we have the market picking up where it left off yesterday. Quite a Fed day. We get a reversal after the statement. The press conference chairman comes out very hawkish. Watch the press conference myself. I had a couple wow moments, actually, and some of the verbiage that he used. We'll get into it shortly. But, boy, you talk about some volatility, man. How about 140 S&P points, folks, from high to low? 140. You had about a half hour to enjoy those highs right near 3,900 in the S&Ps. And guess what? This morning, we're approaching 3,700. Pretty remarkable. The turnaround, we got the S&Ps down more than 1% right now, 1.01 1 .01 at 3730. That's negative 38 points. NASDAQ 100, you're off 1.2%. NASDAQ 100 just gives up about 650 points from that high it had yesterday at about 11,400. We're at 10,816. You get the Dow right now off 241. Say goodbye to 33,000. Say goodbye to 32,000, man. 31,940 in the Dow just that quick to 31,000. And you get the Russell off about 1.1% as well, man. You talk about moves everywhere. Crude market above $90 briefly yesterday. We're at 88.52. We jump over to gold. You talk about some volatility, man. We'll jump over to currencies. We got huge action in the currencies, as you'd expect when you see a gold chart like this. Gold spikes to 1670. We pull back to 1618 this morning. We're at 1621. You're down $28 on the session. Quite a roller coaster for gold. Notes and bonds. What do we got, folks? Higher price and lower yield. How about the 10 year above 4.2%? You talk about volatility, man. Uh, we're off basically two full points. From the highs of yesterday, look where you were on Tuesday at 111.21. Yeah, quite a sell-off indeed. Now, remember, you had the jolts opening in Tuesday in there, right? A million extra jobs than the market was thinking, along with other fears coming into the market. And then we get the Fed volatility yesterday. We're extending all of that right now, extending all of it with the 10-year right now above 4.2%. We jump over to the VIX volatility index, as you'd expect, higher. But check it out in terms of some of that volatility getting sucked out because the VIX is just back to where you were at about noon yesterday in the S&Ps. And to put that back for some context, man, noon yesterday, yeah, you were uh, about 110 points higher in the S&Ps in terms of where you were. You take a look at the VIX, you put this thing on a daily and yeah, not surprising, you get a little green action, but quite the red bars. We're talking about, what is it, 12th or 13th bar, I think, 6, 9, 12. That was the 13th red bar in the VIX yesterday. Pretty remarkable, as volatility sucked out of this market, and we're only up 75 cents today. Think about that, right? I mean, look at this chart in the VIX. Would you know that we're approaching 200 points below in the S&Ps from the high that we just had yesterday? That chart's a little chopped up. Let's put it back to a 15-minute, as I said. But yeah, you were above 3,900. Let's get the exact high here, 3,907. So we traded uh, 180 points to the downside. You wouldn't know that from looking at the VIX, which is interesting. Okay, let's jump around to some of the currencies and take a look at the action there. You talk about volatility, man. Take a look at the dollar, folks. Well within, back within that channel line. No matter where you're putting this lower boundary on that dollar index, we get out of it, but boy, we have accelerated back into that channel line. And if you make a run to the top side of that, you're talking about 116, man, in the dollar index. And we're going to talk about some of the rhetoric that the chairman used because he had a couple messages I think he was trying to convey. You get back to the euro, critical area for the euro here. As you're coming right back into the top of that channel line, see if the euro can get a bounce or if it gets back within its channel line. You get back within that channel line. It's pretty well defined, folks. 95 is the middle, 92.5 is the bottom of that channel line on the euro US dollar. Uh, let's jump over to the pound.
and you have the pound. Excuse me, I was jumping around all the place. Uh, you have some action this morning, of course. You have the Bank of England. They raised by 75 basis points. Uh, but let's jump over to that headline real quick. So I was trying to pull up if I had it. I'm going to have, yes. So the pound tumbles as the Bank of e England, let's get the headline, pushes back on peak in rates. Okay, so they hike by 75 basis points, the most in 33 years, I believe. Uh, but they push back on peak in rates in terms of what they're talking about there. The pound seems to be taking the brunt of the reaction. Yeah. And they're worried about inflation as well, folks. But you know what's interesting in this? I want to get to this chart, and we're getting to a lot right out of the gate. Pretty remarkable, the forecasts for some of these central banks. Check out the forecast of the Bank of England. Now, this is what they just put out, folks. This is the Bank of England, okay? This is their monetary, monetary policy report. They expect inflation to fall sharply in the middle of next year. It's their job to make sure that inflation returns to the 2% target. Look how quickly they see inflation from where it is right now at about 10% to cratering below 2%? I don't know. I would be very skeptical when you start seeing central banks putting out forecasts to this degree. But nonetheless, you get back to our central banks, check out the terms that you really got to pay attention to. Uh, one thing, okay, this was his, Chairman Powell's opening statement yesterday, all right? And the words that began all of it are highlighted here. Let me see if I can, there we go, perfect. We can make it a little bit bigger. There is significant uncertainty around that level of interest rates, okay? Even so, we still have some ways to go, and incoming data since our last meeting suggests that the ultimate level of interest rates will be higher than previously expected. That was a moment where I turned and I started looking at the charts when I heard that quote, right? You need to realize when you're listening to these things, wait a second, uh, a ways to go. What happened to we're going to start tapering to 50 and a quarter and that's it, right? So that comes out in the press conference. And then the moment in the question and answer that really hit me uh, was to some degree, and this was some type of update on CNBC, it's premature to think about the Fed pause, okay? And the quote was, and it was said with some serious almost attitude, the way he said it, Oof. Uh, premature to be thinking about pausing. People, when they hear lags, think about a pause. It's very premature, in my view, to think about or be talking about pausing our rate hikes. We have a ways to go. Pay attention to those words, man. Pay attention to those words. Now, with that in mind, right, you had the statement itself saying they're going to now consider the cumulative effect of rate hikes. So for a period of about 30 minutes, they did change some pretty important verbiage in the statement itself. Keep that in mind as well as you go forward, revealing two things. They're now going to consider that they are in a restrictive area of rates because they have cumulative, cumulatively raised them to a degree that is now restrictive and is having impacts, as he stated, okay? But they're going to make sure also and this, it makes sense, folks, okay? We need to get inflation under control. If we have harsh economic problems for a year or two or something like that, they can always come back in and cut, and that's probably, unfortunately, what will end up happening. They need to get inflation back under control. He seems committed to it. At least he seems committed to it, because I think that's most important. History's shown it's most important. You cannot have runaway inflation and no price stability crushes the economy in the long term. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back talking to our man Kevin Hanks from TD Ameritrade Network. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps, negative by 38 points. You're sitting right at 1% in the red. Let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, folks, fast market from the TD Ameritrade Network right here on Tiger TV at 12 noon Eastern. Your hosts, Kevin Hinks, Tom White. They break down the day's market action. They walk you through hypothetical trade setups, folks. Every single one of those trades is talking about defined risk using options in, in a market that right now is down about 4.3% in the S&Ps just from the highs yesterday at 2.30. Defined risk, man, you got to love it. Kevin Hanks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yeah, a lot to talk about today. Um, you know, it's interesting, Tommy. Yesterday was a textbook lesson on high-frequency trading. And what happens to a market that sees a headline in a, in a formal release saying to consider lags between tightening and economic impact? The market grabbed those words, lags, thinking that the Fed might pivot, ran the market up, Tommy, in one minute at 2 o'clock Eastern time. The S&P rallied from 38.39 to 38.78, 39 points in one minute. The Nasdaq? 174 points in one minute. And so another 20 points in the next minute of the S&P. So in two minutes, the S&P rallied 60 points, Tommy. And then Jerome Powell came out with his question and answer, where he basically took an extremely hawkish tone. And really, in my opinion, Tommy, the only tone he could take. And here's the, the, the line that really affected the markets. Higher than previously expected when talking about interest rates, Tommy. And he mentioned housing, but he also mentioned CPI. And all the data this week on employment so far, now we're three for three, all stronger than expected, Tommy. Jerome Powell just doesn't have the data for any pivot. And, Tommy, last thing, a market since October 13th that had rallied 10.4% on two narratives, uh, China lockdown, easing, well, that's 
not happening. They, they, they just shut down the Apple plant for a week. And Jerome Powell pivoting, obviously not happening there too, Tommy. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I pulled up the Think or Swim chart and put it on a minute basis uh, when you were talking about it. And just looking at the S&Ps, you see the acceleration. And the only two bars bigger than those two green bars, Kevin, were the, the bars at uh, 236 uh, when he started putting out the messages that you were talking yeah. about in the press conference as it dropped, right, uh, like a stone pretty quickly. So pretty remarkable. We go from here, and I agree, pretty much expectation, the word cumulative. Uh, the computers are probably looking for that word as well, and they found it in yep. the press conference. But it would make sense when we're reaching this level of rates. Um, he's a reasonable man. The Fed is full of reasonable people. Of course you're going to you know, consider at some point the, the level of hikes that you have coming in there. But, boy, when he said, you know, higher than previously anticipated, I said, well, that's that's new. That's news. The market's going to yep. react. And then, you know, I had picked up. Let me see if I can find it. Because what about what you think in the press conference um, when he talked about pausing? There it is. He says, um, people hear lags. They think about a pause. It's very premature, in my view, to think about or be talking about pausing. In the way he said it, I was listening to to think about or even be talking about pause. And we have a ways to go. Uh, how far do you think we have a ways to go, Kevin? Well, Tommy, think about it. Inflation data has either plateaued or gone higher in the last uh, CPI data and the last PCE data. And Europe is even worse, right? Their numbers, their, their CPI data in the Eurozone sparked or spiked higher. So I don't think Jerome Paul can look at any economic data for any lightning in uh in, in inflationary pressures. And Tommy, the ADP number, remember 70% of our economy is, is services. ADP data, 210,000 leisure and hospitality jobs. That part of the economy, which has lagged, right, during post pandemic, is now exploding with people coming back into the labor force. So that's why you're getting low unemployment. That's why you're getting high ADP. I mean, this, and that's why you're getting uh, jolts higher than expected. We're three for three on economic data this week, Tommy. This Remember, this market rallied 10.4% from October 13th till yesterday. So uh, this could be interesting the next couple of days and, and weeks, Tommy. It's a great point, man, because the VIX as well just reflects kind of that acceleration in the market. Says, and yeah, the VIX pulling back. I think we had 13, 12, 13 straight days, 13 out of 14 red days in the VIX from October 12, from 34 down to 26. Today, we actually get the first lift, uh, but we're still sitting at about 26, 56, pretty, pretty relatively decent numbers. Of course, currencies with some huge action. We have dollar exploding higher. Yeah. We have gold pulling back, uh, crude backing off a bit, but st still pretty healthy. We were above $90 at one point yesterday for crude. And boy, we got some earnings action today. Peloton, uh, Roku, just huge moves on, on companies that just can't find a bid. But guess what? We go forward, man, and we have more action than that. We got non-farm payrolls tomorrow, Kevin, but we got earnings still coming up this week. What are you guys talking about on Fast Market at 12 today? Three good names to talk about today, Tommy. First, Starbucks, the, the restaurant stock, a big presence in China, as you know, and then we'll look at Square or Block, uh, and then we'll look at PayPal. So two nice. payment systems that, that that we'll cover today. So Starbucks, Square, or the new Block and PayPal today. It's pretty remarkable, Kevin. We're getting, I feel like, at least I'm, I'm learning so much because so much is happening in these markets over the last two or three years. And you always hear, don't chase equities, man. Um, and you know that, you know, companies like PayPal, companies like Square, they're changing the way that we do business, et cetera. Uh, but what do you think of the pullback, man, in general? Give us a little tease of these two. From 290 almost on Square, we're at 54 bucks right now. PayPal up to 310. It makes sense that everything's going. I mean, I send transaction to my friends, whether it's on um, Venmo, Zelle, stuff like that. But what do you think about yeah. these pullbacks on some of these PayPal Square uh, two, companies? Two different companies, two different stories. Square and its allegiance or its commitment to blockchain and cryptocurrency, I think, has affected that, that stock away from the hardware company that it started out as. And then PayPal, some major self-inflicted wounds here when they claimed in a company letter that they were going to start of fining people $2,500 for speech, that that uh, harmful speech. So we'll go through all that today. But 
a lot of self-inflicted wounds. That's news you to know. me. Uh, I'm going to be watching, man, as usual. Um, yeah. But, boy, just remarkable. And I remember seeing those stocks at the high saying, man, these are such great companies. Look, at they're going to change the world. Uh, should I buy some? And, thankfully, don't chase those stocks sometimes, folks. We see it on those two, the market in general right now. Pretty remarkable. Kevin, I appreciate the time, as always, on a busy day, man. We don't talk to you tomorrow. We get non-farm payrolls tomorrow morning. As I always say on Thursday, we're going to know a lot more when we talk to you on Tuesday, as usual, man. But we appreciate the time. We'll be watching at 12 o'clock today. Have a great day. Have a great weekend, Tommy. You too, Kevin. Folks, tune in every trading day. You heard it. They're talking about three great ones. And look at these charts, man. Look at these charts. A 100% retracement, folks. We're sitting at the COVID lows on PayPal, right? So much for a Fibonacci retracement. You don't need it. I wonder when I put this on this chart, uh, I should be able to figure it out. And I, maybe I'll look because I bet it was way back when I was trying to look for a retracement on somewhere to get in this equity. Square, right? 100% retracement. Whoops. PayPal. Yeah, more than 100% retracement. You got down to 70, $67, excuse me. The COVID lows, $82. 15 bucks below the COVID lows, almost 20% below the COVID lows, and we're still sitting below there at $79.45 in Starbucks. Another remarkable pullback for Starbucks, almost to COVID lows from 50, down below 70, we're sitting at 84. Stay tuned, folks, we'll come back for the open. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We've got markets open. You opened down 42 points, and we're dropping from there, man. And don't be surprised if you continue because, boy, the rates are uh, pretty strong statements as I read them off at the beginning of the program. And I tell you, that press conference moment, you want to look for the moments that you can feel the emotion, man. And I can feel that emotion when Chairman Powell said this quote, it's very premature in my view to think about or be talking about pausing our rate hikes. Don't think about it. Don't talk about it. We're not pausing. We have a ways to go. Pretty strong words in the market reacting. Uh, you jump over to Europe, and you have the pound sinking, the dollar accelerating. And I think they said eight quarters. Is that right? Eight quarters they're looking for, for a recession? Now, they raised by 75 basis points to 3%. Largest hike in 33 years. There's your pound action. In terms of the UK economy, bank now expect bank staff now expect GDP contracted by half a percent in Q322. Yeah, and I think they saw eight quarters. Is that right? Maybe somebody has it in the den. I was reading about it earlier. Of recession, like two years potentially. They're in some big time problems in a big way. Okay. Let's jump around to some of the other stories I was reading this morning. How about this for home buyers? Uh, getting older and older. First time U.S. home buyers are oldest on record, 36 years old. First time U.S. home buyers. A, a typical first time buyer was 36 this year, three years older than 2021. Uh, for repeat purchases, rose to 59. Interesting how that separates there. Uh, the share of first time home buyers declined to 26% this year, the lowest since records started. So you have the lowest percentage of first-time buyers and they're all dramatically lower than usual. What does that mean? Nobody younger is buying a home for the first time and has been under historical norms of 40%. And it would make sense, right? Uh, very difficult right now, especially as you come into 2022 with rates rising, prices going up 30% in the prior year in some areas. In Florida, that was the case, man. I'm sure they've pulled back from highs. Uh, but mortgage rates more, more than doubling. And yeah, and minorities not in there a big way. The age thing, pretty interesting as that pushes up. And what it really means is, you know, less percentage of first time buyers, 26% and much older. Young people just can't buy a home right now. But guess what? Maybe they'll come back into the market if we get that next pullback. Because boy, if we are really in an area that the Fed's going to keep things at five, five and a quarter percent for an extended period of time, well, if they want the economy growing at about 2%, they need to get back down to that number the moment they figure out they have inflation under control. So remember that one in the back of your head. It's been pushed back for when you'll need it, as in three to six to nine months from right now. Okay, you don't need it right now because that's not the plan right now. Uh, he did say that they're probably going to begin thinking about slowing the pace of the hikes at the next meeting or the meeting after that. Very real scenario that they go to 50. Maybe they go to 50 for two meetings. Maybe they go to 50 and then they go to 25 and 25 and they go to 25 until they, they're sure. Maybe that's what they do, right? But nonetheless, it speaks for itself for where we are. Uh, let's jump around to some of the equities that are moving. Moderna, they are lower after they lower the 2022 sales outlook. Uh, they're talking about them in the den. They may face uh, lawsuits as well. In terms of some of the news out there, but nonetheless, let's jump around to Moderna shares, MRNA. And they bounce off of that. Not a bad rebound from 125, chopped around at 130. You open, you're up to about 142. The market's traded up about five points on the open right now. Moderna, though, down by 4.5%. Pfizer had their numbers earlier in the week. They traded higher, but they uh, looks like they're getting drawn down by the market maybe and Moderna as well, as Pfizer's down about half a percent. And yeah, how about Peloton and Roku, man? Let's see. So Peloton, you're down about 12.5%. So you don't get below that low. You Did did you pre-market? I think you did pre-market. No, we didn't. We just got to 685. So we didn't go get below 666, but you're down 13% for Peloton and Roku. A little bit of a lift as well, but you're still down 14%, man. Two stocks I think that is a recent low. Yes, it sure is, man. Just cannot find a bid, and they miss both of them in pretty dramatic fashion. Roku, it makes sense. They're going to be selling less advertising, man. Of course they're going to be selling less advertising. Digital advertising, it's going to be one of the first things to go, folks. 
First things to go, digital advertising. Very simple. Just turn off the spigot. You have to stop paying the bill. Yeah. You know, the other thing we haven't even talked about, all right, now I think Kevin referenced it, uh, was the jobs number that we got in terms of uh, weekly jobless claims. Excuse me. I think it was 217,000, right in line with last week, just under 220,000, which was the market was expecting. So it's a pretty healthy economy, to say the least, folks. All right, let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks and see how we're trading. Apple shares. You talk about a give back, man. You're off 1.8% at 142 right now. Jump over to Amazon. Amazon, barely flat, but boy, they had quite a day to the downside yesterday. Amazon, pretty remarkable. You were just at 120 on October 25th. You're at 92 bucks, man. You're down $28, okay? What is that? That's about 23 or 24%. Amazon is down since October 25th. New recent lows for $92, and you put Amazon back on a five-year weekly. Yeah, and you're trading back to right now about July of 2018 prices. Pretty remarkable. Let's go back to a daily. We jump over to Tesla. Tesla shares at about 215. Social media, meta shares down about six tenths percent right now. Snap. Down about 3% right now. Let's see how growth stocks are doing. ARC down about 2%. Zoom shares down about 8 tenths percent. Teladoc right now down 3.6. It's a tough market, folks. Let's jump over to the gold contract. So gold's down $30. $16.18, they make a low. $16.20. You know, it's getting, it's getting harder and harder to call this a consolidation area that it's holding as it's trickled out of this area, even on a weekly basis. Right, and realistically, you almost wanted to say that that area began at about 1737. You saw a chop around on gold from June of 2021 till December. And if we're getting higher dollar, man, gold's gonna struggle. Oh, you know what we'll talk about when we get back is there's a lot of people buying gold though in the central bank business uh, somewhere overseas, folks. We're gonna talk about that because there's a Bloomberg article about gold and how much is being bought, and it is like numbers that defy uh, understanding them with the human brain. There's the dollar yen. So dollar yen, up a bit. We put it on a 15 minute. There's your action on yesterday, catching a lift a little bit today to 148.16 on the yen. We're negative by 40 right now in the markets, and let's jump over to the VIX and see if it's caught up at all. Pretty tame action on the VIX. As I said, I mean, check it out, right? The VIX is just where we were at the start of trading yesterday, folks. Read with into that what you may, but if there was maximum fear in this market, the VIX would be spiking. So I'm not sure if that means right now that potentially there needs to be more fear in this market, that the market really needs to sell off to put some fear into this, or if that means, hey, we kind of knew what was going on yesterday, okay? Anybody who said anything differently was kidding themselves. Of course, they're gonna be data dependent. Of course, they may have to go higher for longer because the numbers have been excessive. But guess what? They're going to start considering them all together because we've reached that point that they're in a restrictive policy rate. S&P is negative by 37. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. And welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps right now, negative by 30 points. You're just chopping around basically where you open a little bit higher in the market. Says we were as low as 37.21 right on the open. So we've gained about 16 points right now. Be interesting if the VIX is talking to you. Pay attention to that VIX sometimes as it's saying, hey, we don't have any fear priced into this market right now. I know we're 4.3 percent off the highs of yesterday, but we don't need to buy insurance. We're not going to pay for it because we're not that worried because we already knew what the Fed was saying yesterday. So maybe you get a little bit of a recoil. That would be pretty interesting today in the market. Let's jump over to notes and bonds and see how we're trading right now. You get a little bit of a reversal. You're talking about 10 ticks since I've been on the program, folks. Uh, we have gone higher. And you've seen a little bit of a pullback in terms of the rates over that time. We pull up the 10-year, taking a look at the 10-year yield, 4.17. Um, that's down about four basis points since I came on the air. We were above 4.2. We're at 4.17. So the market adjusting a bit to yesterday's action, but you still have the S&Ps down near about 1% right now. Okay, what else we have going on in terms of the market? Uh, where are we going to jump to? Let's jump to some of the streamers. Disney. Talk about taking it on the chin, man. Down 1.6% today. You take a look at Disney on the daily. And yeah, I mean, maybe this is an area. You get back down to this $90 area. I think those are weekly annotations I have on this chart. Yeah, they sure are. So back in COVID, you did about $146 million. That's the week of May of 2020, right? Volatility through the roof, man. You came back into that area. All right, look at the declining shares on a weekly basis. You do $113 million. Then you do 62. Then what do we do? We did 70 and 51 and what do we do? 54 at the actual lows in July. You get back down to that area and you do 43 million on a weekly basis in October, right? Coming into those areas with very, very light volume on a weekly basis. Uh, we've already done 27 million this week, but we're at about 100. But man, you know, if you're looking to build a position on Disney, that'd be an area I look at it, maybe 90 bucks. Maybe you could scale into it by a partial position. And, you know, I wouldn't be loaned into any position right now in this market where it is right now, folks, because in any equity, you know, you get a pullback right now in these markets, you're down 4.3 percent, folks, since 2.30 yesterday. OK, so if you don't think you're facing some volatile times, again, you're down 4.3 percent since where we were yesterday at 4.30 uh, in the afternoon. Taking a look at on a Fibonacci basis right now. I'm going to pull one of these off for a little bit of clarity here. Uh, first thing to take note of in this chart, okay? This goes back to April. You have an acceleration in April from 4,600 down to about 3,600, 1,000 points in the S&P. You make it back to about the 618 area, okay? I'm going to pull that off. 
Now, where are we right now? We're sitting right at about the 50% retracement, folks. Now, this is from the run from August 16th at a price point of 43.27, exactly about 600 points below that price level. You trade all the way down to 35.02. You chop around, you're up to 39.24, okay? And now we're sitting there um, at 37.26. I gotta back this out, come on, there we go, come on. And so now we've backed right off that 50% retracement. Now, if this is an A to B, and let's just say it's a huge one, that your A point is August, your B point is 3502, right? You're talking about an A to B leg of about 800 points, 4300 to 3500. You trade up to 3900, it's gonna bring it down to 3100 to 3200, folks, in that area. And what is absolutely remarkable, okay, is that if you take, I'm gonna eliminate that one now. Is this the COVID lows, or I think I actually got to go back a little bit further for what I'm looking for. No, yeah, that's it. It's the 618 of the entire run from 2174 up to 4808. You would pull back to basically where you chopped around in for June, July of 2020. Remember how good it felt when the market was back above 3,000 in July of 2020? Think about how bad it would feel if the market was back above 3,000 two years later. Context is everything sometimes, folks. It's not the end of the world if the market goes back to 3,100 to 3,200. All it takes is one more extension of this A to B leg that we might be running through because that's quite an acceleration out of the B point right now, and we'll see how we trade into the 3,600 area on the S&Ps. I mean, we got some volume here, right? 14 million shares traded on the S&P September 26th. Uh, but boy, the fact that it lines up right near that area in terms of one more extension of that leg, we break through it and the 618 to 3171. Let's go back even further. Out of curiosity. Yeah, I thought so. That's the one that I wanted to pull up as well. Because what is that? And that's the one I was really looking for. It's a 382 of the run from the lows of March of 2009. So what do you got? You have a 3A2 of the longest trend out there, okay? That's not outlandish. We get 3A2s in the market all the time. Don't tell me I can't do a 3A2 when you trade higher, basically from 2009, outside of the COVID collapse that we got, right? And maybe outside of the, the fear and the pullback from the taper tantrum in December of 2018. Outside of that, you had a bull market from 665 to 4808 and a 38% re retracement would bring it th to 32.21. Now, zooming in, that'd be what they call confluence, folks, when the 3A2 and the 618 line up. Different confluence, different retracement areas from different trends, that puts you in an area, and where is that area? It's about 32.20 to 31.77, and as I just went over, that would be basically an extension of another A to B, C to D from the A of August 16th, the B point at the lows at about 3,500, the C point at about 3,900, and yeah, you run lower, man. And you know what's, what also is in here, because it's not, not a science, folks, okay, is that, you know, the A to B leg might be something more like 4,300 to 3,600, okay? Because look how consistent those lows were. We got it on September 30th, October 3rd, uh, October 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th, and 17th, we all had that area as a low. And so if your low is kind of near 3,600, maybe you have an A to B leg that's something like seven to 800, six to 700, right? From four, as in you're getting 700 points potentially, and 700 off the 3,900 brings you right to 3,200. So it's possible, folks, and markets, guess what? They're right now at basically session lows of 37.21. So be careful in this market and make sure you're positioned to handle if the S&P trades down to 3,200 because it's totally possible. Chairman was very strong yesterday in his words. And we're facing a lot of economic pressures, man. And that dollar index, it's not slowing down, folks. And it's not going to slow down right now. Sitting at 113, well within the channel line, back in that price level. And let's see how the pound is trading on there with their action going on. Yeah, continuing to drop, man. You might 
be challenging the lower portion of that channel line already. Look at that. Sitting at 111.73 for the pound. And we'll finish up this segment with the dollar yen as we get the yen backing off a bit. Okay. Gold still struggling at about 16.23. Stay tuned, folks. We got one more segment. I'm going to find that gold article on Bloomberg. We'll talk about central banks and buying that gold. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have markets accelerating lower right now. You've got the S&Ps at session lows, basically off 1.5%. That's 55 points in the red. The NASDAQ 100's off 1.8%, 10,743. And you got the Dow right now off 1.2%. We jump back to the dollar index. Sitting at about 112.97. So you don't see the dollar index accelerating higher to cause this reaction. And you don't see uh, the 10-year tanking sending rates higher to cause this this is just a market sell-off accepting what's come um in my opinion folks as you have the s p's down 55 now i talked about the gold article on bloomberg with mystery buyers so check it out mystery whales baffle gold market after central bank purchases how much did they buy 
399 tons of bullion in the third quarter, almost double the previous record, central banks. Now, that's according to the World Gold Council. Uh, just under a quarter went to publicly identified institutions stoking speculation about mystery buyers. While most central banks inform the IMF when they buy gold to supplement their foreign exchange coffers, other more, are more secretive. Few have the capacity to undertake the third quarter buying spree. And what they talk about here is we've talked about it. Gold could be getting hurt a lot more with the, the yen where it's at, with the dollar where it's at. Yes, it's been taken a beating, man, but gold priced in dollars, of course it's taken a beating when the dollar just won't stop going up. Exaggerating a bit, but what did you have? You had record buyers in here, folks supporting that market to a certain degree. Uh, that's one person in there talking about. Now, who could possibly be into it? China, of course, the number two economy. Uh, rarely discloses how much gold its central bank is buying. In 2015, they revealed a nearly 600-ton jump to the bullion reserve after being silent for six years, so they don't talk about it. Could be China. Could be Russia, of course, okay? Um, yeah, the last time Russia reported a change was 2010, and it could be India. Nonetheless, man, you got buyers. That's part of the reason. Gold, as tough as it's been with the dollar, could be worse, man. You got buyers in a big way in that gold market. S&P's down 56. It's going to be a wild one. Stay tuned, folks. We got Basil up next. He recorded his show at 8 o'clock live after that. Have a great one, folks.